Sound and logical. Are they white as snow? Thank you, Jesus. Are you washed in the blood? This is a business, and you know you don't you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You want something from God. I want you to start praising Him. Come on and praise God for your freedom. You're not bound, you're free. You're not bound, you're free. Come on, John. Bend that leg in Jesus' name. Step out. Step out in the name of Jesus. Step out in the name of Jesus. Step out in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Lift that leg up in loosen. In loosen by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is a business, and you know you don't you don't get meetings or you don't get booked back unless you have a gimmick, or as the, the evangelists say, it's a it's a, a ministry. Like the, it's incredible. They'll say, "Oh, brother, so and so, he's got the ministry of laying on of hands, or he's got the ministry of prophecy." But that's a gimmick, and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings. If you don't know Pastor David Lin, who are you? I think most people know you. <laughs> Wow, oh, who am I? Wow, well, who are you, man? I mean, you, I, I you know share, this guy. I can share me out, but this is maybe my platform. Yeah, so, yeah. So, 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 so people know, know me and not you, but if you... Is he lying or not? Is he really being persecuted in Denmark? I am a big, big liar. Or is this just a big scheme of something to get money um, from people? So God takes me well to get spit on and to get punched at. God takes me too well. I'm inspired by uh, this man's ministry because that's what he's doing. But called you ministry knew, of the word. You knew he went there. I don't follow someone else's ministry. We're not related. Brother so and so, he's got the ministry of laying on of hands, or he's got the ministry of prophecy. But that's a gimmick, and the guys that have the gimmicks get the big meetings and do good. Oh, glory, glory, oh, hallelujah! Since I lay my burden down, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Right there at the age of four, I had a decision to make. And I said, yes, Lord, I will. Thank you, loving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I dedicated my Amen. life to God. Praise the Lord. Glory. That night when she went home, that cancer had dissolved and run completely down her face. She was healed by the power of God. And the only thing that was left was a little irritation mark of little pink skin. But the skin was new like a baby. Hallelujah. Only because she believed. Hallelujah. When I would go to a pastor's church where I hadn't preached before, and they'd sort of look me over and wonder, you know, what was I really going to say? What was I really like? And I just sort of have to just cool it till I got up on the platform and they saw that I did say all the, the things they wanted to hear. Would some of you get out $5 or $10? Bring what you would for Jesus tonight. Come on. I can't really think of a time that I ever believed in God or in, you know, and I've ever thought that it was a miracle of God that I preached. I don't think even with all the people uh, gathering around me, you know, thousands of people saying this has to be a miracle. Surely, you know, God has called you and all that. I don't think with all that, I just, you know, knew that I could do it well and my parents had trained me, but I never really tripped out and thought that I was some uh, real miracle child of any kind. I think nowadays people have seen so much, see so much happen, they can, they can tell one of these shysters when they come through, because oh, they've know. heard everything, you know. know. They'll listen a couple nights, and they won't say anything, you know, but they can tell after a while. Yeah, they're not dumb, you know, people are intelligent nowadays, they... There's, there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies, and he told me how he did it. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table, back and forth at me. And, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on, this station is over 40 states. And uh, 
he'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight, that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you've never known before. And then he comes back to me and he tells me, he says, if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time, you've got thousands of people listening, the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar and so if you even get you know if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you that's two grand that you've made just like that and so you know if you're going to get into big time religion this is the games you've got to play things like that it's a it's a you go into it as a business and you work it as a business, you know. As they make their way up into the upper room, oh, hallelujah, they shut the windows, they lock the doors for fear of their lives. But I see them as they got down on their knees and they began to pray. And I see the Holy Ghost as cloven tongues of fire were upon them, hallelujah. And oh my, the Holy Ghost finally found a permanent resting place. What do you want God to do for you? right now. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Praise Him. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God is so real tonight. Already saved, but they're getting the baptism, and someone will be standing there, going, and you know, and the poor person will be standing there, and they're not saying anything. Then after a while, about four or five more will gather around, and they'll start doing the same thing. You know, come on, speak it out, speak it out, till all of a sudden the person will, you know, get so overwhelmed by the thing that they start going, you know, and the next thing, oh, that's it, you've got it. Like they feel good, we got another one, you know. Tremendous, tremendous. He's a born preacher. He's a, he's a. He's He's a boy. He's just a preaching machine. But it's an miracle of God. He is and of God the body, no question. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Thank I've watched certain rock performers perform, and a lot of things I do, you know, I've copied off of them or, or gotten in, you know, like Mick Jagger. Certain things that I do, I, I sort of do like a waist hunching thing that he does sometimes. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. We gotta watch out for these professional shouters. Can you say amen? Some people, I'll tell you, the minute the music starts, any woman's in the spirit, you better watch out. Cause they gotta do the boogaloo or they gotta do the front. They got their own little thing. That's not the spirit, man. That's carnal. Come on. Hallelujah. You're not liking this, but I'm telling you the truth and you know it. I mean, if I was going to pick a religion uh, of, of you know, Christian type religion that I had to go into one of them. I mean, thank God I don't have to, but if I had to go into one of them, I would, you know, pick the Pentecostal faith because some of the churches, the music is just great and uh, the people are interesting, you know, they're kind of weird. Uh, and it's okay, you know, it's. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. Hallelujah. I just want to see the hands tonight. Did you play that song, He Touched Me? I can't get up and say to them, okay, now listen, if you just believe this afternoon, I mean, it's all got to be done under the thing of uh, Jesus, and uh, which even that's okay. Like, you know, the Jesus thing I would leave, but they still, I've got to put in that thing, like if you don't come down, you're going to go to hell, and you're going to burn, and you've got to go into the sin thing. It's the the way that I have to do it. If I could just do, like, the faith number and get up and say, okay, you know, everybody, let's really get loose this afternoon, and get off and get rid of all of our hang-ups and have nice group therapy that would be great but you can't do it that way i've got to it's got to all be done under this facade of holiness for something something happened it's gonna happen are they white as snow thank you jesus are you washed in the blood of the lamb oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is so good to me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise the Lord. It's going in and out of the two lives. It's, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. What can I say? Sometimes I feel like I should get up and do repentance to the audience or something, you know, which, like I have these fantasies. 
a lot of times you go through like I'd really like to get up and uh, just tell them what I really think or where you know where I'm really at or what I'd like them to do then when I get up you know I go right into my sermon but things like this relieve my head at the time but I've been playing with that now for a couple of years and I just can't go on doing it like that anymore Hallelujah! 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 He's free right now! He's abandoned that lake right now! God's a set him free right now! The God's a set him never do it! Over a year! It's been stiff, but tonight is free! Once that you get one or two that really come off and say, Yeah, I really felt that, you know, I had a bad bag or I had a bad leg, then there's a host of them say, Oh, yeah, I feel better too, because like 90% of it's psychosomatic. I feel better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You know, God is going to do something for you. Then I'll turn around to the crowd, and I'll say, everyone, do you believe it? And, you know, everyone, say yes, you know. I said, that's not enough, but there's no faith here tonight. I can't do anything. You've got to believe it. And I'll go, do you believe it? And then by this time, the crowd's go, yes. And I'll say, sister, as I lay my hands on you, it's going to happen. By this time, you're just like this, you know. Because <laughs> I do a whole thing on you. Then, you know, I sort of like get down to, now I'm going to pray the prayer, and everyone bow your heads. And all of a sudden, they go, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And you know, this time that the shock doesn't get you. you know? Thank you for the little children, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister, the joy of the Lord's all over you tonight. Why don't you praise him? Say thank you, Jesus. I believe he's going to touch you right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Sister, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Honorable Satri Hasia. Glory G to Jesus. Some time ago, Life magazine referred to this guest, Prophet Jones, head of the Church of Universal Triumph, Dominion of God Incorporated, as, and we quote, the Detroit evangelist who preaches good faith and gleans its happy rewards. It goes on to describe him as a celibate, a teetotaler, and a mystic. Was all that true? Well, they said it. I don't know whether it's true or not. Are you a celibate, a teetotaler, and a mystic? I never compliment on myself. I always let my life speak for what I am. Well, how would uh, Life magazine know whether or not you were a celibate unless you told them? I didn't tell them. They just took a guess? They just took a guess. Uh -huh. Would you like to hold your hands up in front of the camera? Both of them? Just uh, put your hands there on the table, if you will, Prophet, and we'll uh, get a closer picture of the... What would you uh, estimate the value of those rocks to be, sir? I don't know. They were given to me by my members. Well, what's that big chunk on the... next to your pinky there? That's a topaz. Topaz. That's my birthstone. How many carrots is that? Fifty-one. Fifty-one carrots. And how about, you've got bracelets, and what are, are these love offerings or love gifts? They are love uh, gifts, sir. What, what did you do to justify getting those? Well, after I pray for people, uh -huh. uh, they are so glad. They know that they cannot pay God or me for my prayers to God in their behalf. So... They'll go away and come back and bring a gift and give it to me. I see. And say, I accept it. Uh -huh. What was the story about you when they opened up that secret room you had and they found a bed covered with bags of money? I can remember how I used to have to go down and work with my mother and father, the whole thing, money, money, from the time I was four years. I really supported them, you know, when I was a child, come to think about it. The doctor said he'd never do it. Over a year, it's been stiff, but tonight it's free. This is God's day, and if it's God's day, it's your day. Hallelujah. This is the day of the children of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. 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 Oh.
Father, say Jesus. Right now, Jesus. Say Jesus. Say it again, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, brother, be loose. Be set free right now. That's right. Say Jesus. Just say Jesus. Say Jesus. There's the experience where you say you're saved. Then there's the fire baptism when you get the Holy Ghost and that's the tongues thing and they love to work people over you've got to like shoot in on this when you see people gathering around people and start laying hands on and praying with someone you've got to like come in with the camera too it's very important because they'll be laying hands on someone and the poor person will be saying you know thank you Jesus now this is a person that's already saved but they're getting the baptism and someone will be standing there going you know and the poor person will be standing there and they're not saying anything then after a while about four or five more will gather around and they'll start doing the same thing you know come on speak it out speak it out till all of a sudden the person will you know get so overwhelmed by the thing that they start going you know and the next thing you know, oh, that's it you've got it like they feel good we got another one you know then they'll go on to the next person <laughs> My God, hallelujah, I come against all the powers of Satan in Jesus Christ's name right now. I rebuke the powers of darkness. Oh, Yadamasi, Yadamasi, Yadamasi. Thank you. Coming from you, I think that's a compliment. Found out, found out where that dove, dove went. Boy, that climax on that dove was it. I like that. <laughs> I got that when I was down in Texas. You know, you know Fitzgerald? Yeah, well, Fitzgerald. I preached that the first time in his church. <laughs> Stuff and I'll count this. Okay. You, you gonna trust me? Oh, I think I'll trust you. Okay. <laughs> 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, of the Lamb. Jesus is so good to me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise the Lord. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I feel good in my soul. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, sure isn't as heavy as it used to be, though, in the old days. Wow. It's really heavy then. I can remember how I used to have to go down and work with my mother and father, the whole thing, money, money, from the time I was four years. I really supported them, you know, when I was a child, come to think about it. I remember how they used to send me down into the aisles, and I wore these little velvet pants and uh, Lord Fontoine suits with satin shirts, but my mother would sew, like, extra pockets into the suit so I could stuff money. And they would announce tonight, now, everyone tonight that gives $20, little Marjorie's going to come down and give you a kiss. All these little lovely old ladies that wanted to get their fingers in my little curly locks. Then after I'd fill up my pockets, I'd come back and my father would alleviate me of the money. I don't even remember what town it was in exactly, but I know I remember as he took off, we were in a meeting, he left a note. He, he preached the meeting one night, and if I remember right, I think he took the offering too. <laughs> I don't know how much came in. As far as I can guess, maybe about $3 million from the time I was 4 to 14. And, I have no idea what happened to that money. I know that I never saw it, or I never got any piece of it for my education or anything. I traveled with my mother for about uh, close to two years. Novelty was wearing off of a child preaching. Our money had run out. We were more or less living at that time from meeting to meeting. Finally, I guess I was uh, close to 15, about 14 and a half. I remember we were in Los Angeles at a meeting. I said to my mother, I said, this is gonna be the last time I preach. I said, I'm not gonna do it anymore. So I stopped. <laughs> Friend, listen to me. My name is Marjo Gortner. I'm only four years old. I'm coming to your town to...
shoot the devil down. So come and go with me, and surely you will see me preach the old-time gospel and have a jubilee. Everyone praise the Lord. Howard Smith, who used to write scenes for the Village Voice, and was running a radio program on PLJ, which was like an alternate radio station program. He was doing interviews of people, and he found out about this guy <laughs> that used to hang out there, and that he had been a child preacher, and he had done these tent tours. He was on the tent tours of um, all over the country, and uh, that he was interested in becoming a rock star or something. And he asked him if he could go back and do that again. You know, he did an interview with him and for his radio broadcast, and the guy said, oh, yeah, I could go back and do it again. <laughs> well, how could you go back and do it again? You're, you're a fallen, you know, angel. I mean, you said, oh, you know, you can always go back. They love it when you go back. You know? <laughs> and some people, you see, they've taken these prayer claws for their son or their daughter who is in drugs or dope addiction. And they've given that prayer cloth to him, and I've had many testimony of a young person after they got one of these prayer cloths, they were delivered from drugs. How many believe that God can work this way? So they, uh, he became a partner <laughs> in the film, <laughs> and uh, he went back, he got back into the circuit, and he did about eight tent shows he did uh, all over the country, D Detroit, and Anaheim, Mass uh, California, and, and a whole bunch of other places. Do you believe it? Praise the Lord. I want you to get out the largest bill that you have right now. If you believe, if you don't have that much faith, then you shouldn't come down anyhow. Even young people, anyone who wants to come down, if you want to believe for someone in your life, I want you just to give us a $20 bill is the largest bill you've got, then I want you to get that out. So it was interesting because what the film is it develops his story of his life through these different tent shows and you, you get you learn different things about him including that he really wants to be a rock star and he's he's out there doing a boo he's ranting against the boogaloo and the frog and that's carnal man and he's jumping around like Mick Jagger with the microphone you know and he's you know he's a good looking guy you know he looks like a rock star anyone else who wants to right now stand to your feet he was a very controlling personality I was told to keep him out of the editing room, that he, was, he would try and get in there and control what I was doing. And they, you know, he didn't trust anybody for good reason, given his childhood. And he would be very seductive, you know, and say, oh, I love to see editing, you know, you know, do some kind of number on me. Well, he didn't, he didn't call. But when he did show up to look at the film, he came with a lawyer. They came and they looked at the film and he just loved it. He was just laughing. I heard laughing coming out of there. And the lawyer too. They, they just loved it. And they felt, well, this will do this ought to do the job for them. Make him successful. And it won an Oscar. <laughs> Believe in God, you must first explain because I met the guy that robbed my house. Believe in God, he had a big cross on his chest when they caught him and down at the prison. He believed that didn't stop him from robbing my house. Believing in God won't make you good or bad. The Ku Klux Klan believe in God. The one thing that they said that they have established a religion to protect the name of Jesus. And so read the whole philosophy. That don't mean a thing because you believe. You believe and your behavior are two different things. But you said earlier that if uh, we start playing, paying black preachers tomorrow morning, the church will close. Let's hit on that. I gotta hit that. I mean, let's not pretend like we don't know this ain't no business, man. Like, yeah. like let's 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 not play with it. Let's not lie to ourselves. Let's not be delusional on purpose to act like these religious institutions aren't set up as businesses. As an ex criminal, myself, gang member, as an ex, everyone knows if you do fraud, mm -hmm. it's less risk. So their system of doing fraud is very good. So they're showing them a new system. Um, they 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 empower them by giving them status like as a pastor. So when a pastor will demand you to take out a loan, you feel like you have to. They'll give they'll they'll give a little scriptures and twist it.
I had Dr. Walver come out to speak at my church on a Sunday morning. I asked him this question, Dr. Walver, what's the greatest issue facing dispensationalism today? He looked at me and says, young man, it's what it's always been, the inerrancy of the Bible. And then I got a little lecture from him on how dispensationalism is the best approach to the Bible to express and defend the truth of the Bible. It's not just about eschatology. It's our approach to the Bible, our hermeneutics, and our belief that the Bible is from God and take it at face value. If black people stop playing tides, because we all know the most abundant building in the black community is the church. Mm -hmm. Like there's more churches than gun stores, liquor stores, and pawn shops. Hey man, come to my neighborhood. So, so we do know that if black people stop playing their tithes and stop giving their offerings, a lot of those churches would close shop. Most people talk about the responsibility of the leader, but you often talk about the responsibility of the followers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important conversation that needs to be had right here. Sound and logical.